Hello guys, this is the third shelf in my wrestling collection. We start off with uh, SummerSlam 1993. Uh, the first pay-per-view, I guess, of the post Hulk Hogan era. Uh, I was Lex Luger versus uh, Yokozuna, which I thought was a smart move uh, to try to get someone else into the main event picture besides just Bret Hart. Just because with losing Hogan and a lot of the other guys, they needed you know, more main event people to carry the company. You can't just have the same match over and over and over again. So I didn't blame them for having Lex Luger versus the Yokozuna. And I thought they handled it correctly at this pay-per-view. Uh, Bret Hart versus Jerry Lawler was, it was okay. They had better matches down the road. Uh, Undertaker and Giant Gonzalez again. I mean, not no one can make Giant Gonzalez look good. Uh, Shawn Michaels versus Mr. Perfect was an amazing match. Razor Ramon versus Ted DiBiase was an amazing match. Uh, the rest of these matches were just kind of filler. There was nothing really spectacular about the rest of this card. Uh, then we have Survivor Series 1993. Uh, this was uh, an average pay-per-view. It was more of a setup pay-per-view to what was going to happen the next year with the whole uh, Brett and Owen storyline. Otherwise, the rest of it wasn't really... You know, The Undertaker being on Lex Luger's team was interesting. But as far as, far as the rest of it, it, was, it wasn't that great. I thought the Razor Ramon uh, Survivor Series match had potential because there was a lot of great people in it. But the whole interference with uh, Randy Savage and all that type of stuff was... It was weird. Uh, this one doesn't have the cover art, but this is uh, Royal Rumble 1994. This is one of the better Royal Rumbles as well. I wouldn't put it in my top five, but the finish alone with uh, Lex Luger and Bret Hart both being uh, the winners was unique. Diesel's domination of most of the match was also unique at the time. And then the uh, precursor matches with Yokozuna versus The Undertaker. And then Owen Hart and Bret Hart trying to win the tag title, setting up their WrestleMania 10 match was phenomenal, which made this entire pay-per-view a very solid pay-per-view. Uh, then of course you got WrestleMania 10. Uh, this is one of my favorite WrestleManias. It's a classic. You know, it's got the Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon ladder match, of course. Uh, that would probably be in the top, you know, 10 matches of WrestleMania history of all time and probably won't ever be removed from there. The Yokozuna, you know, the Yokozuna matches were only average. Uh, the Brett and Owen match was really good. Yeah, the rest of it was just kind of more of a, more filler. You know, Earthquake and Atom Bomb lasted like, you know, five seconds. Doink versus Bam Bam was not very good. The Quebecers and Man in the Mission wasn't good. Macho Man and Crush even wasn't even really good either. It was a unique type of match for the time. You know, fighting backstage, fighting all over the arena and all that type of stuff, but it just it just didn't deliver. You know, Crush, in my opinion, kind of hurt Randy Savage in that match. Uh, then we have King of the Ring 1994. Uh, again, this was more of just a setup pay-per-view to set up what was gonna happen at SummerSlam. Uh, with Owen Hart winning the King of the Ring. You know, Diesel versus Brett was average. You know, a lot a lot of interference, so that kind of made it stupid. Uh, I didn't like the commentary team so much in this with uh, Art Donovan being there. So, all in all, just kind of average, more of a filler pay-per-view. Uh, then we have uh, SummerSlam 94 which was one of the better Summer Slams at the time as well. I loved the cage match between Brett and Owen. The Undertaker versus The Undertaker was a great idea. And then you, you know, you finally had uh, Razor versus Diesel with Sean, you know, interfering, trying to interfere a lot and all that stuff, setting up the storyline between Diesel and Sean. But whenever the click was involved, they always had some good storylines and matches going on. 
I just thought it was too much of it at the King of the Ring. Perfect amount at this pay-per-view. Uh, then you have Survivor Series 1994. One of my more favorite Survivor Series, you know, with Bob Backlund versus Bret Hart in the submission match. And then you had The Undertaker returning against Yokozuna in a casket match, which was great. Uh, the best match, however, I thought was the first match of the pay-per-view, and that was Shawn Michaels' Teamsters versus the Bad Guys. And uh, the whole Shawn Michaels-Diesel breaking up arc. So that, that made this one of my favorite papers. That and Chuck Norris was there. I mean, come on. <laughs> then you have Royal Rumble 1995. Even though this show was three hours long, some of the other matches must have gone over. You know, Bret Hart versus Diesel was great. Uh, even Razor Ramon versus Jeff Jarrett was great. Uh, everything else seemed very rushed. The Royal Rumble was every 30 seconds someone entered, so it just kind of, you know, it took like 30 minutes, you know, as opposed to the usual hour. And there wasn't a lot of big stars in that Royal Rumble either, because lot, and the ones that were there were eliminated early. You know, the British Bulldog is a good wrestler, don't get me wrong, but no one ever thought he was ever going to win the Royal Rumble, and he didn't, thank God. But the fact that you made him one of the final people in there, you kind of knew he wasn't going to win it. Then you had WrestleMania 11. Uh, this one felt small because it was small, even though they had Lawrence Taylor there. This was kind of at the low point in WWE as far as financially. 95 was probably one of their worst years pay-per-view wise, in my opinion. Uh, Bam Bam versus LT was okay. It wasn't fantastic. Shawn Michaels versus Diesel, you know, they had better matches down the line as well. Uh, and the rest of these matches were super, super forgettable. I mean, The Undertaker versus King Kong Bundy. I mean, just a waste. So let's see what this one is here real quick. This is uh, the second WWF In Your House that took place after uh, WrestleMania. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't really remember a lot of what was on this show without the cover art. So. And uh, this is King of the Ring 1995. Uh, one of your more forgettable King of the Rings. Nothing really special happened here with Mabel winning the, the King of the Ring. I know they were trying to make him a big bad guy to face Diesel. You know, they were trying to build up people for Diesel to face to make him the next Hulk Hogan. Uh, then you had SummerSlam 1995, which was, in my opinion, horrible. Just horrible. You know, you had Diesel versus King Mabel, which, you know, and that was a horrible match. And they tried to recreate the WrestleMania 10 match between Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon. It was okay, but it was definitely nowhere near as good as the WrestleMania 10 match. And then after that, you had uh, another in your house. Uh, this one was, you know, these early in your houses didn't really do, do much as far as matches go, as you can see. <laughs> You know, Razor Ramon versus Dean Douglas was interesting. But beyond that, you know, only the main, the main event really mattered. So that'll do it for this shelf.